Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now, consumer privacy compliance has allowed users to manage the tracking of their data. But this popular option has developed challenges for marketers across all platforms. So to combat this, AI technology for data insight has become the core for services such as Blue Ocean, which are offering data input reports to help financial institutions. So today I've invited Grant McDougall onto the podcast to learn more about how they're using technology to evaluate brand data and consumer sentiment continuously. And I also want to discuss how to better predict market shifts before they happen and confidently understand where and when to allocate investment resources and how to track moves of competitors and make informed data-driven decisions. All that, of course, washed down with a fantastic backstory and killer tune to finish the show. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to San Francisco, where Grant McDougall from Blue Ocean, he's waiting to speak with us today. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Great, Neil. Thanks for having me. Grant McDougall, I'm the co-founder and CEO of a company called Blue Ocean. And what we do is we're, we're really trying to transform the way marketing decisions are made by applying machine learning and AI. So it's a, it's a really exciting time for us. We're a Series A funded company by Insight and growing really quickly. And before we started recording today, we were just having a, a very brief chat about, obviously, you're in San Francisco now, you've come through Australia and the UK. So I've got to ask, I mean, what was your origin story? Where did your passion for technology come from? And what was it that put you on this path you're on right now? Yeah, you know, my, I, I blame my for everything. He was a, you know, a CIO in a, in a bank. And then the internet emerged in about 1990s, the early 90s. And I, I just saw it and I was at university and I was like, oh my goodness, this is going to change the world and I want to be involved in it. And so I started at a company called Spike in Australia. I got involved in building sort of, you know, big systems for people like Qantas and Toyota. And then from there, I, I just realized that, you know, I wanted to connect, you know, technology with experiences and in classic Australian way, I, I went on a kind of a walkabout and I, I had the opportunity to to work in Japan and then live in the UK. And when I was in the UK, I ended up running HP globally for a big advertising agency. And so eventually I saw myself arrive in 2006 in, in San Francisco and I fell in love with the place. You know, it's designy, it's, it's innovation and it's openness to, to new thought, you know, really connected me with me. And so I decided to build my family here and, and live here and ultimately build a company. That path led you to Blue Ocean. So can you tell the listeners a little bit more about what Blue Ocean is and essentially the kind of problems that you're solving for businesses with this technology? Yeah, I think, you know, I've you know, been in a marketing and advertising background for, for 20 years. And, you know, one thing I realized was, you know, if, if I could have more data and I could get that more quickly and I could have the confidence to act on that insight, you know, marketers can simply do more. And so what we've, we've built is we've built a platform at the center of it. We aggregate publicly available, you know, things like websites and advertising and market share data and, you know, what customers think. And we use sentiment in a really unique way to help marketers understand where they sit relative to their competitors. And then they use that data and our scoring model to, to make decisions like, you know, should we be focused on our advertising or should we be focused on our content strategy? And we, this unified model, you know, basically allows them to, to just make decisions more quickly. And so people like Microsoft use us and Diageo use us. And, you know, we go from the chief marketing officer who's really struggling for, to understand what's the priority for the marketing organization to the advertising and media people, to the content marketers, um, and all the way through down to loyalty. And we're really trying to democratize the notion that if you bring brand intelligence to everyone, everyone has the opportunity to have the same information, we'll be more creative, we'll be more capable, and we'll be able to simply do more as people. 
And we will have businesses listening all over the world. And I think what we need to highlight here is traditionally legacy marketing consultancies, they like, let's say, McKinsey or marketing firms like Interbrand, typically take months to provide results and recommendations. And as any, any business leader will tell you, they come with a pretty hefty million-dollar price tag too. So can you set the scene and tell the listeners a little bit more about how conventional marketing agencies cannot give their clients relevant and actionable information to, to outpace their competition? Because that's what it's all about, isn't it, to stay ahead of the game? Now, think about it, right? We're, we're, we're in a podcast in a digital environment, and you're going to distribute that, and it's going yeah. to happen really quickly. That would have been the old old radio model, right? You yeah. would have had to, I would have to come in to, to see you. But the, the way that marketing has been done in the past was, you know, someone would have an idea, someone would have a hunch. They would then go out and they would do some research and, you know, they would do qualitative research, which is surveying and asking people what they think. And they do quantitative research and they would, you know, look at what's my competitors doing, what's the market share. And they would, they would use people like legacy consultancies like McKinsey or Innerbrand to do that work. And it would take, it could take months. And, and often, you know, we live in a digital world, which is responding in, in minutes and not months. And so that research comes back to fuel the idea. It tends to be pretty rear view mirror. If you think about it, you know, by the time that the, the actual report is authored and you've got that insight, the market's moved on. And so, you know, we thought that you really needed to change that model. You needed to shorten the time to understand what the problem was so that you could act more quickly with and with more confidence. And so that's typically the marketing motion. And once you've got your, your campaign or your idea, you then go and spend a lot of money. Like you, in some cases, you'll spend 40 or $50 million building a brand campaign with TV and distributing it on a global basis. Imagine if you could get to the answer faster. And in our case, it's about 14 days. It'll soon be 15 minutes. And so it's it's a really exciting ability to allow people to just simply do more. Love that. And if we talk about artificial intelligence, for many people, it is an overhyped buzzword. And maybe they've been burnt by hearing about many solutions that claim to have AI, but don't actually have it at all. So well, to set the scene and put everyone in the same uh, page here, how can AI address some of the challenges that you've just mentioned there? Well, if you think about it, you know, it's being able to see the landscape. And yeah. you know, often you know, when you're, you're using machine learning like we are, we're, we're integrating many, many data points from you know, a wide array of sources so we can actually understand you know, ultimately what you and your competitors are doing at scale. Very hard to do that in a human context. And then we're, what we're doing is we're, we're looking at the actions that brands are taking to train the model to make recommendations. So you know, if you're seeing a competitor increase their spend 2x, what do you need to do? And so we have these automated recommendations that come off our platform that fuel the ability for, you know, basically people inside the organization to take actions more quickly. And so I totally agree with you that the notion that, you know, people have AI at the center of everything they're doing, it's just simply, you know, we, we don't see that a lot. We see a lot of machine learning going on. And I think that's where the, the, the bulk of um, our industry is right now. And before you came on the podcast today, one of the things that excited me about what you're doing at Blue Ocean is how you're using this outside-in approach to data and the role of AI in that. And for people that are listening to our conversation today, anywhere in the world, hearing about you guys for the first time, can you just expand on that a little? Yeah, I think, you know, we live in this world where we've been really focused on one-to-one -one marketing, right? The individual cookies, you know, the the personalization, really focused personalization. So, you know, thinking about, you know, following you across the internet, making sure that we can retarget you, giving you advertising. That world's changing. You know, people like Google are actually deprecating their cookies, which allows the underlying infrastructure for us to do that. And so about two and a half years ago, we thought about a different model, which was, look, how are we going to be able to give the same level of insight to brands without that personalization. And so what we did is we looked at how brands are operating. What, what are the actions that they're taking? What's their market share and growth rates? And how does that relate to the competitors that they're trying to take market share? That allows us to get to context. And that context becomes really powerful because in a world where you can't get to one-to-one -to -one and you're moving away from that, it really brings us back to this notion of 
brands and audiences being aggregated around brands. And so you need context aware applications like Blue Ocean to, to help you master that landscape. And just to bring to life everything that we're talking about here, do you possibly have any, I don't know, use cases or client stories that you could share that would just help listeners understand how you overcome those challenges that we've talked about today and possibly how it might work in their world too? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I got a great story two days ago from a chief marketing officer, and I don't know if you you guys know that chief marketing officers have got one of the shortest tenures in, in any business. They, they have a tenure of about 18 months. And so, and brand marketing is incredibly hard to measure. And so this client is Juniper Networks. We're all in FY22 planning right now. And he's he's had the hunch that the awareness issues, so his ability for people to know his brand has been slowing growth for his company. He implemented Blue Ocean earlier in the year and he used it to, to actually evidence that he had an awareness issue. He took it to the board and because it was numerate and it was a feeling, you could actually evidence with, with data. He was able to get 4X the budget and be able to you know, convince the board and the CFO to actually invest in brand, which is going to unlock a lot of growth, which is really exciting because simply it is going to allow them to widen their funnel, get more leads, grow at a faster rate, and to really be able to invest in the most important thing, which is their brand at, at large. If we, I mean, we're approaching, what, two years now since the pandemic first arrived and we, we began working from home at scale, then we evolved into hybrid working. And if we look at the, the needs of a consumer two years ago compared to now in whatever industry they're going to be completely different so for businesses that want to try and be a little bit more proactive than reactive next year in 2022 how do you think they can better predict market shifts before they happen and maybe track the moves of competitors and and make more informed data-driven decisions rather than just going on that gut feeling that they used to yeah, well, I, I think instrumenting your 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 marketing process is is the starting point. Be it if you're you're using analytics. In the case of brand, it's much squishier. So so tools like ours are, are helpful in understanding, you know, what's the benchmark? Where are you today? So knowing that's going to be important. Then understanding how your competitors are moving over time. And so, you know, taking a market context first is going to be really useful. So think about what you just talked about and the pandemic. How many new D2C brands or direct-to-consumer brands were launched because we had to sell to individuals in their homes and we had to deliver products? And so for, for that starting point, there's new marketing motions that are required. Being able to see your competitors and what they're bringing to market earlier is essential. And so we think about that as you know, sort of predictive intelligence around competitors. So making sure that you've got the full landscape view and then acting on it. Right? So having the confidence to act is the essential leap of faith that brands need to take because often there's a lot of opinions and there's not a lot of objective data at the table for which they can make decisions like, you know, my competitor, you know, increased spend 4X or they change their messaging. And so having that visibility is the starting point and making sure that you've got a cost-effective way to to actually get to that intelligence. And although there has been a lot of uncertainty over the last 18 months, there is a, a feeling of optimism in the air, and especially at this time of the year where everyone's looking to bounce back in 2022 and, and do things differently. So what excites you about the year ahead? Is, is there anything that particularly excites you, whether it be tech trends or the direction of the market? Is, is there anything that, that has really got you at the moment? Yeah, I think I think the what, what's going on in cloud and you know, getting businesses to radically you know, digitally trans, transform. You know, we've had a forcing function, which means people are having to to simply actually adopt new technologies. So things like consumer apps or you know, Unilever selling direct, or you know, I think that's that's super exciting. You know, I had an offsite um, just recently and. Just seeing my teams come back together was has been fantastic. You know, there's this this absolute need for community around businesses and you know the ecosystems that they operate in. And so, I've been really excited to see the the revitalization of the human connections, which we all desperately need to to really help drive the business as a whole. And so, I think we're going to see more of that. We're going to see the 
the desire to to build community in new ways into into organizations and you know really really begin to to see that on the rise as we come into 2022 2023 on the on the trend side you know, i think you know facebook's and and meta what's going on there i mean that's a that's, a, that's an interesting play for them and i think what we we're, we're starting to see is this this new move into mixed reality and i think that's going to play out i think that's going to play out heavily as um, those businesses begin to invest in new content types, new content forms, and it's it's going to have an impact. I think it's going to have an impact as we get into the back end of FY2022. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Incredibly exciting times ahead. Now, we started our conversation today talking about your origin story, and I always like to finish by asking, I guess, if there's a particular song that has inspired them in their past, helped them in their career, been the soundtrack to that story, or just helps them get their head in the zone before going on stage. Now, as someone that began in Australia, travelled to the UK, and now you've been in the US since, I think, 2006, that kind of tells me that there's going to be at least one pair of noise-cancelling earphones uh, that you take with you on your travels, not to mention great bands in every of those continents that you've been on. So what would your song and story be that you can share with us? And we'll add it to our Spotify playlist. Yeah, I think I think you've got it's either it's a tough one for me. It's you know, there's definitely an AC DC mix yeah. in there for me. I think it, it's back in black or hell's bells. <laughs> 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 we'll, be, we'll be up there, you know, and you know, beds are burning by midnight oil. Cause you know, if I think about where we are, you know, there's always got to be a burning platform for what we do. And you know, I like what uh, Midnight Oil actually stood for, you know, they stood for something in their community. And, you know, they're, they're definitely the heart of Australia for me. Absolutely. And I think somebody's chosen Black and Black, Black and Black already. And like you say, Midnight Oil, everything they stood for, great band for the time as well. So we'll get Beds of Burning on our Spotify playlist for sure. And just let everyone listening all around the world discover them too for the first time. But before I let you go, for anyone wanting to discover Blue Ocean, find out more information about anything we talked about today, What's the best starting point uh, to find you online? Yeah, Neil, if they go to www.blueocean.ai, they'll be able to find us on the on the website. And, you know, if they've got any questions, they can reach out to us and we'd love to answer them and, and help them on the journey of adding brand intelligence into, into the mix. Well, I cannot thank you enough for coming on today. And yes, talking about how companies are measuring and comparing their brand health to competitors by using Blue Ocean's AI platform, but all washed out with your great human story behind it, what led you here, and of course, that killer track to add to our playlist too. So thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I just loved hearing about Grant's story today and how companies are measuring and comparing their brand health to competitors by using this AI platform. And as we mentioned in the interview there, traditionally, legacy marketing consultancies like McKinsey or marketing firms like Interban actually take months to provide results and recommendations. And yes, they do come with a million dollar price tag very often. But current market solutions are irrelevant to our fast moving society. And we just need to look at the events of the last two years to see just how quickly things have changed. And these costly and time-consuming practices usually offer their customers and those costly and time-consuming practices usually offer their customers outdated insights by the time they are complete. I mean, if we look at what we expected as a consumer two years ago to our needs and wants as a consumer now, I suspect there'll be a few changes. But I'm curious, how are you seeing the speed of change in your industry And what role is technology playing in making that boat go faster and getting those insights quicker so you can have a more proactive than reactive approach to those customer needs? As always, my door is open to each and every one of you. Tech blog writer at Outlook.com, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram at Neil C. Hughes, and my website is techblogwriter.co.uk. So keep those messages, your opinions, your experiences coming through. And if not, Don't worry, I'll join you again tomorrow. We'll have a similar conversation. But thank you for listening as always. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.